Okay, another project complete. This is my microwave oven transformer stick welder. And I'm going to go through each thing slowly here. I was very fortunate to find this Nortel rectifier box at the dump. So all I had to do was on the front was add this plate to cover a big hole that was here. Put my power switch with the LED indicator right here this screw and this screw holds the rectifier in place with a piece of um, like bake light this is all 10 gauge I get an output of 52 volts DC not AC I convert it to DC this wire I found at the dump on a washing machine I had to make this plate and then I riveted it in. See a rivet there, rivet there to cover the back up. You can see the capacitors in there. And it's some holes for ventilation even though it's blocked. There's so many holes here. I got a hole down there. This whole side is open. All right. These clamps, Harbor Freight. This ground clamp was only, I think like $7. And this clamp here was 10, but I had 40 off on both, so it was, it was like nothing. And they also sell the 16th of an inch or the 332nd uh, welding rods. All right, let me see what else. I'm going to open this up and show you what I did here. So I'm going to put this down. So it might not be that nice, but just for a second. Hold it. This opens really nice, this box. Can't believe I found this box. The screw's a little tight because the way the cover is, but it's good. Let's do that. Watch how this opens, it's so cool. Okay. Check that out. I got two, these are 40 volt, 37,000 UF capacitors. And the output from my transformer, as you can see, this is 20 turns of 10 gauge. I riveted the transformer into the bottom and put some sealer under it so I wouldn't get any hum out of it or vibration. You get some hum, but not a lot. All right, you're also gonna get the other transformers right there. Same turns. This one I think has 19. I couldn't really squeeze a 20, but it worked fine. This is a non-conductive piece of plastic for the capacitors to sit on. So I got two 40s, 40 volt, 40 volt, 37,000 UF, and I had to connect them in series because I needed higher voltage. So now it's 80 volts and 18,500 UF. And you can see over here, there's an aluminum bus bar joining the negative and positive together. And I covered it. And not only did I cover this to protect it from shorting on the cover, but I also put that stuff on the cover for there. This right here is a barista. Basically, it's uh, as the voltage gets higher, the resistance gets lower. And you're supposed to have it at a certain voltage. Like these are 80 volts. And I think my diodes are rated for 100, but I'm not sure. But you want to have this a little lower than the voltage of the capacitor or the diodes. This way, if there's any spikes, this will absorb it first or get ruined before the diodes or the capacitors get ruined. I have a little cooling fan right here, which I made this bracket for. Let's see, it riv right there it rivets in, holds the fan. I added an extra transformer with a there's a little uh, bridge rectifier there, and I got a capacitor tied into the same switch. <clears throat> this right here is a 100 amp uh, diode trio. It's a D15 standard motors standard motor parts. I think it's called something like that. Standard Motor Corporation. 
and you only need two of these out of the three. You could put one leg of the AC there and one leg of the AC there, but I joined these two together. This way I could have more current and I figured why waste the space so I just used it. And it's rated for 100 and this doesn't put out anywhere near 100 I don't think. It puts out maybe like 40 or something like that. And I also added some capacitors. There's a two here and then there's two more right down here. And those are to protect the diodes from spikes and the voltage and stuff like that. And overall, and this you can see how I mounted the rectifier. You don't want any of this touching the housing, otherwise it'll short out. So it's like a quarter inch thick piece of bakelite, which I found in an old power plant. <laughs> <clears throat> so I connected it right up. And that's it. It works fantastic. Very smooth welds. Let me show you <clears throat> just a sample on the plate. We go in the sunlight here. I pr this was just from banging the stick on it. Just, my first was using it to get a feel for it. And right there, above my thumb, you could see a nice weld. It just flows perfect. And that's eighth inch steel. It'll probably do three uh, three sixteenths, possibly a quarter if you keep concentrating the heat with the stick in one spot, but. 316 to me is good enough. Okay, thanks.